Oh, it is my great pleasure to invite you to the PIBS Summer Symposium. As a reminder, PIBS is a research initiative aiming to explore parallels between intelligent behavior in natural and artificial systems and to leverage these insights towards the goal of building a safe and aligned AI. The second iteration of this research fellowship program happened over the course of the last three months. And now you get to see what they were up to. And first step is Giles. Giles has a background in philosophy of action. He's interested in the nature and emergence of agency and normativity in humans, social entities, and AI. He's also working on the relationship between instrumental rationality and the adoption of values and policies, particularly in the context of founded agents. And I think, Giles, if you're ready to go, you can turn your video on. Hello. Is that, uh, is that going? share my presentation. Um, okay, is that working? Well, I'll take that as a yes. Yeah, seems so, good. Okay, great. Um, so, hi everyone. Thanks for coming to my presentation. So, um, this is something that I've been working on at PIPS. Um, in conjunction with George Dean. So a lot of what I have to say is sort of from joint work. Uh, and you'll hear from George later and he'll fill in some of the details that I leave uh, unexplained. But basically the topic I'm talking about here is auto-intentional agency and its links with AI safety and AI risk. And um, so here's the plan for the talk. I'm first gonna begin um, giving some more kind of general thoughts and reflections on how I'm now seeing the relevance of agency to AI safety discussions. And um, I'm gonna sort of justify the approach of focusing on one particular kind of agency uh, with reference to that kind of, those kind of more general reflections on what are we even doing when we're talking about agency and AI risk. Then I'll get into the specific kind of agency that um, George and I think is particularly interesting and deserves a little bit of attention. Um, and I'll particularly pick up on this notion that uh, auto-intentional agency is plausibly associated with particular planning capacities which seem dangerous, potentially dangerous, um, in advanced AI systems. And I'll go through some of the reasons I think that uh, auto-intentional agency plausibly uh, enables certain advanced forms of planning. Um, now, there's, there's much more to say about auto-intentional agency, and George will say more things there, but that will be my focus for this presentation. I'll also just briefly mention a, a few challenges that I'm thinking about right now uh, as, I, as I turn this into a paper with George, and uh, then we'll hopefully have some time for discussion at the end. So um, let me just begin here with some general reflections on the discussion of agency in AI safety. So this notion of agentic AI, often contrasted with so-called tool AI, um, it seems to be agentic AI that often we're worried about when we're thinking about particularly the most severe catastrophic and existential risks that AI could pose. And uh, why is that? that? So I think there's a few things that I want to pick out. One is that agency considered as goal-directedness seems to be associated with this notion of instrumental convergence, the idea that no matter what your final goals are, uh, it will make sense to adopt certain sub-goals, such as self-preservation and power-seeking, um, which are useful no matter what your final goals are. Um, and those sub-goals could be dangerous. And that combined with the orthogonality thesis, which just means basically we can't rely on the fact that they're smart uh, to um, relax and say, okay, they're going to be 
value aligned, they're going to be good. Um, the second way that agency, I think, is associated with uh, risk in this space is by considering agency and it's as a kind of autonomy. And that implies to me, if AI systems have this agency, that if they're autonomous, then humans kind of lack control over them, uh, which is seen as dangerous or worrying. So the final thing is a kind of more vague thing, but I think it's still important, which is that action seems to be push the world in kind of more directions, stranger directions. Um, we get into a larger set of possible worlds in universes in which there are actions than we get into in universes in which there's just kind of unintentional stuff happening. So um, I think it's plausible that because of that, that's another reason why we might worry about action in particular. Now, the folk concept of agency, agency as like, it gets talked about in a load of different domains, seems like a pretty fuzzy concept to me. So we use it in just loads of different ways and um, we can try to be more precise about this. We can try to sort of break down our folks, like folk concepts into sort of more precise technical concepts. We could try to create sort of taxonomies of agency. So here's a kind of very basic idea of how you might taxonomize agency, but it, not pretending it's a full taxonomy or anything like that. So like some people talk about moral agency. Agency is tied to the capacity for moral responsibility. Rational agency, the capacity to act for reasons. Um, people talk about biological agency, which is tied to notions of self-maintenance, allostasis. Um, there are more kind of minimal conceptions of agency, which try to sort of encompass everything that all the rest are talking about. Uh, these are often tied to notions like goal directedness. Um, and then there's agency understood under the sort of intentional stance strategy as developed by people like Daniel Dennett, where agency is tied to being the kind of thing that becomes kind of predictable or understandable when interpreted as an agent. So these are all kind of different ways to carve up the space of agents and non-agents um, that we might use. And my question is, so why do we want to, in the first place, uh, divide the world into these agents and these non-agents? What is that doing for us? And I've come to the kind of sort of pragmatist, methodological uh, idea here, which is that we first need to sort of identify our particular purposes and concerns. And then once we have, once we're clear on those, then we can kind of zoom in on the most useful sense or kind or level or dynamics of agency, those that really speak to what we're interested in, what we're concerned about. So in the context of AI safety, the question is what sense of agency, what kind of agency, what levels of agency are worth talking about uh, in that they might elucidate the kind of risks that we're facing. Um, so I think these are four plausible answers to that question. You might think that just none are. You might think that uh, agency just doesn't carve things up in the right kind of way to identify the difference between risky and non-risky uh, AI systems. Uh, you might think that minimal agency, so, so this big, big concept that's trying to cover all the bases of agency, maybe that's the thing, maybe goal directedness is the thing, or in the AI safety literature you sometimes see this consequentialist thinking, these kind of very general ideas about what kinds of things agents might be. Um, but then there's likewise a very sort of broad category of the, the sense of entities that are picked out by Daniel Dennett's intentional stance strategy. And then the final suggestion I have is um, maybe we actually want to be more interested in more than one sense of agency here. Maybe different kinds of risks uh, are associated with different forms of agency, different dynamics of agency. And we have to just sort of look in detail here and there in the whole space of agency to discover the kind of weird dynamics and risks and dangers that we're really interested in, in terms of AI safety. And I've become increasingly uh, sympathetic with that final answer. Uh, I think it's fairly plausible that different kinds of agency in AI systems would be associated with different kinds of risks. and. Uh, there's not much we can say kind of in a very general level. We need to sort of look specifically 
at these things. So uh, that's kind of broad reflections on the nature of AI uh, risk and its connections with agency. Uh, I'm now going to zoom in, so adopting that same strategy, I'm now going to zoom in on a particular form of agency that I think is really worth thinking about a little more. And I'm going to kind of make a preliminary case for this being a form of agency which seems particularly salient when we're thinking about AI safety. Um, so here is that sense of agency. I call it auto-intentional agency. And the idea here is, so taking a step back, the intentional stance, so when we adopt the intentional strategy towards some entity, and this is Daniel Bennett's kind of idea, we understand it broadly as an agent. We understand it as something that has its own goals, which pursues those goals in some kind of approximately rational way, given the beliefs it has, or the beliefs we think it should have. So auto-intentional agents are a special category of intentional systems. Uh, it's namely those agents that, uh, that adopt the intentional stance towards themselves. So auto-intentional agents interpret themselves as agents. Um, they infer their own beliefs, they infer their own desires and their goals, and they predict their own behavior according to uh, the mental states which they've attributed to themselves. And I think that um, psychologically normal adult humans are these kinds of agents, we are auto-intentional agents, and I think that we engage in this kind of uh, auto-intentional agency just all the time. And things totally with ubiquitous. An interesting question is, do animals do this? So um, George, who I've been working on this with, uh, is more sympathetic to the idea that animals also do this. I'm not as sure. Um, anyway. So why does it deserve our attention? Um, why does this particular form of agency deserve our attention? Well, I think that there are, uh, George and I have both come to the conclusions that we think that there's plausible connections between this kind of agency and the development of dangerous motivations, which George will talk about later in his talk. And in this talk, I'm going to focus on the plausible connections I think there are between this kind of agency and certain dangerous capacities. And I'll be particularly focusing on the idea that um, this kind of agency is probably associated with certain kind of dangerous, sophisticated planning capacities. I think it can do Probably, it's probably involved in other kind of capacities which might be dangerous, but that's what I'll focus on here. Now, I also think that it's quite plausible that um, this auto-intentional stance stuff or something functionally similar is fairly convergent and could actually happen in AI systems. Um, so that's something that I maybe like to discuss a little bit more in the Q&A if people are interested. Um, and George will be talking about that as well. But for now, let's, let's talk about this connection that I think there is between planning, the dangerous planning capacities in this form of agency. So auto-intentional agency, I think, enables metacognition. Um, it enables us to have this sort of second-order intentionality in our mental states. It enables us to think about our own thoughts. We attribute ourselves a belief, and then we can adopt some kind of attitude towards those beliefs. We can, we can believe, believe that we believe something. We can desire not to desire what we desire, and so on. So we get this kind of higher order um, intentionality, which enables metacognition, thinking about thinking. Now, metacognition seems very valuable to me um, in the context of planning. So more broadly, people have made fairly strong claims about how important metacognition is to thought in general and to cognitive capacities in general. So, for example, Dunbar claims that thinking about each other's thoughts, um, mind reading each other, created sort of self-consciousness and this intelligence explosion in humanity. That's a fairly controversial claim. But I think what's less controversial is that metacognition does seem to play a very important role in allowing us to reflect and reassess um, and to error correct. Um, you know, we hold our beliefs that we infer we have or, or our, you know, parts of our world model. We, we think about our plans and whether they make sense and we can kind of think about them and come to more kind of coherent uh,
views uh, by, by doing that. So it seems like medical cognition plays this very important role in making our world models, our goals, uh, our plans and our intentions kind of more coherent and um, getting rid of sort of errors and random things that have snuck in there that shouldn't be there. And this is all going to make us just more effective, coherent kind of planners and agents. And hence, uh, goal realizers, right? We're going to be more effective at achieving our goals uh, because we have this metacognitive ability. So that's one area that I think uh, auto-intentional agency enables uh, more sophisticated planning. Another one is that I think it has a lot to do with uh, coordination, which I think is also very important in planning. So um, in the real world, um, you have to be planning in a world that is swarming with other agents, with their own plans and their own actions. And these other agents, they sometimes resist our plans, they sometimes have to play a role in the execution of our plans. Sometimes we just won't succeed in our plans unless we get other agents on board. We have to coordinate. That's all very interesting. I'm just going to focus on one particular form of coordination, which is coordination with yourself. I just see something popping up in the chat. Okay. Um, so coordinating with the, with the self. Um, I think that auto-intentional agency is basically the key to how we do this. So here's a little example, a little toy example. Um, so Odysseus has two goals, to hear the siren song and to live. At time one, he has no desire to jump ship and swim to his doom. Uh, so why doesn't he just sail close to the island, hear the singing and leave? Well, because he would die, but luckily he's an auto-intentional agent, which is to say that having a good model of himself as an intentional system he infers that he will acquire a new overriding desire or goal when he hears the, the siren's song at time two. That desire will end up with him swimming uh, to shore to a certain death. So to achieve both of his T1 goals, he endures having himself tied to the mast, right? So here's just an example of how modeling yourself as an intentional system, understanding how you will react given uh, your agency and what you believe about it, your mental states, your intentional states. That helps you plan in an effective way to achieve your goals. So in this case, being an auto-intentional agent is what enabled Odysseus to solve this planning problem. So there's a little kind of intuition pump of, wait, how could this, how could coordinating with yourself be useful? What kind of a problem is that? And how does auto-intentional agency play a role there? Um, I'm gonna go on. So, I think that uh, auto-intentional agency also plays an important role in cross-temporal coordination um, backward. So shelling points, uh, which is a phrase that will be familiar to the PIBS people, um, is an example of this. So say that I've left my bike locked up somewhere at university while I was away over the summer at PIBS, and I've forgotten where I've left it. How do I choose where to search for my bike? Uh, as I have a bad memory and my past self uh, knows that I have a bad memory, right? I infer that it's likely that my past self has foreseen that my future self would forget where I left my bike. So my past self probably left it somewhere he thought my future self would look first, right? So what do I do in the present? I look for wherever I think my past self uh, would think that my current self would look. Um, so again, this is just an example of where modeling my past self as an intentional system, that was modeling my present self as an intentional system, helps me to solve a planning problem, namely efficiency, efficiently searching for my bike. And I think that um, very similar dynamics are going on in just standard linguistic communication. Um, and you can see it in the kind of the pragmatics which rely on recursive mind reading and always having a sense of uh, that your interlocutor is modeling you as an intentional system and you're relying on, on those kind of inferences to make sense of what they're saying and, and what you're saying. Um, 
Okay, let me see how much time I have left. Um, I have a bit of time. Okay, so um, I think that uh, it's plausible that auto intentional agency is broadly doing a job here of enabling a form of planning which includes the agent as a kind of dynamic part of the world model, which is, a, which is I think, a way of getting at what we're talking about when we're talking about embedded agents. So um, we're, we're, we're kind of understanding the agent itself as another entity which we need to predict and manage and a thing which might have slightly different goals to ourselves or might have learned more information about the world than we currently have. Right? So we're, we're trying to sort of manage this future self um, and auto-intentional agency allows us to do that by allowing us to model the future self. So I'm going to skip over these speculative predictions. We can come back to that if we have time at the end. But the broader point I'm trying to make here is that auto-intentional agency seems to allow us to solve various kind of planning problems, the kind of problems that arise given that agents can change their goals and values and update their world models and beliefs and so on. Um, yeah, five minutes. Okay. Um, so, um, so, why do we care about planning? Well, advanced planning capacities have been associated with um, dangerous AI, and I think that's fairly plausible. Uh, Bostrom, Carl Smith, and Russell will talk about that. Um, sophisticated planning uh, capacities make systems harder to predict, harder to counteract and control. And also you get kind of instrumental convergence out of advanced planning because systems kind of realize that they, by improving themselves in certain ways, they can achieve their goals better. Um, now, realizing uh, goals is what makes these systems kind of valuable to us. That's why we want these systems, uh, or that's why there's an economic incentive to build these systems. And planning is roughly the skill of navigating from initial states to goal states. So it seems very plausible to me that uh, there's incentive to build capable um, planners. And it seems, given the links that I've suggested here between this capacity and planning, it seems like there's strong incentive to build uh, systems that can do this kind of thing. Uh, I have a few minutes left. I'm just going to quickly mention the few challenges that I'm thinking of. Um, so one is that you might think that, hey, this also intentional stuff, that's just very human. Um, it's, 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 a prob it's how we've solved these various problems. Um, but why would AI do anything like that? Why wouldn't it do something quite different? Why wouldn't it just model based on, for example, having a, a physicalist model of, of reality? and model itself as a physical system or something like that, rather than as, as an intentional system. So I think that's a totally plausible answer. Um, I think that might be the case. Uh, I think there are some reasons to think that um, that might not be the case as well. I don't quite have time to go into that now. George will also be talking about that later. Um, so, and another point I just want to raise quick, very quickly before I end is that um, there's kind of ambiguity from what I've said about whether this, this, this kind of agency is creating differences in degree or differences in kind with respect to risk. So it might be that I'm saying something like auto-intentional agency enhances dangerous planning capacities, which already kind of could exist in different ways. Or it might be that I'm claiming, and this would be the far more interesting claim, uh, that auto-intentional agency is actually necessary for solving these kind of planning problems and therefore, auto-intentional agency is necessary for certain kinds of risks, um, which risks which involve uh, solving those planning problems. So those are things that I'm thinking about right now, and uh, I'll end there and get into the Q&A. Um, OK, so. Um, uh, I'm guessing you're just going to read off the question yourself, Charles. Is that what do you yeah, want sure. to do? I, I, uh, sh cool. Should I read the question or shall I think the plan okay. is for me to read them out, but I think you're ready to read them out. Is that right? Yeah, I, I can see them. Yeah, okay. I'll just read them out and respond. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, sure. first question here from Daniel. Do you believe auto-intentional agency can emerge in LLMs? If you discuss GPT-4's goals with GPT-4, uh, can you observe sparks of uh, auto-intentional agency? Yeah, that's a fun question. So I think, um, I think it's very unlikely that auto-intentional agency could em emerge in an LLM, at least how they're currently, the, the current architecture around LLMs. Now, I don't know too much about the technicalities of how LLMs work, but my understanding is that there's basically no loop between, um, like, the LLM isn't, uh, there's no loop between the outputs of the LLM and its future inputs. And I think that you need that kind of loop in order to have an ecosystem in which auto-intentional agency would arise. Um, because I think um, you need to kind of, in order to care about yourself as a potential cause like of various things in your world model, uh, you have to have your own uh, outputs significantly shape your own inputs. And I don't think LLMs do that kind of thing at all. Um, uh, Alia, Alia um, says auto intentional agency seems sufficient for sufficient for unnecessary, I guess, but unnecessary for most of these capacities. For example, auto intentional agency seems to require an ability to represent my cognitive states, but I can be aware of my cognitive states without being able to represent them as mine. Right. The same thing is true for planning. So why? estimate uh, existential risks in terms of auto-intentional agency rather than in terms of the various capacities that auto-intentional agency may be sufficient but unnecessary for. Yeah, I think that's that's a great uh, question. Yeah, sorry, you, you created it. Yes, I think I lost that. I missed that. Um, so I think ultimately what does matter is uh, the actual dynamics and capacities, which are dangerous. So I, I take it that the role of talking about agency, different types of agency, is broadly to explain um, the nature of these capacities uh, and the nature of these dynamics. Um, so given that they seem, so again, yeah, right, so it, it could be, if I'm saying the weaker thing here, like at the end in the challenges thing, if I'm saying they just seem like helpful but not necessary, then I think that like what you're saying makes sense as a suggestion. I guess I think that there's some plausibility to the idea that at least some of these capacities, particularly the, the coordination with the self, does actually require um, um, auto-intentional agency. I, I don't see how a system could do it otherwise. Now, I don't think you have to be a, a realist about auto-intentional agents in order to do, say any of this. So I don't think you have to say, actually, you need like real cognitive states. You could just say, well, I'm taking the auto-intentional stance towards certain things and it works, as in I'm modeling something as though it's the kind of thing that is applying the intentional stance to itself, whether or not it actually is in some uh, more realist sense. Um, yeah, that didn't... Sorry, that wasn't the clearest answer, but I hope it gives some indication. Um, how are we doing for time? I have a couple more minutes. Um, so Camille says, any idea on how to reliably detect whether a system is on the verge of becoming an auto-intentional agent? Um, great question. Uh, I think I probably don't have such a good answer because I'm not even sure if, um, an if like higher animals are or not. Um, so I guess one thing you could do is just be a, um, you could just be a kind of Donetian about it, in which case you would just say something like, well, look, if you positing that they are the kind of being that is an auto-intentional agent, that is the kind of agent that applies the intentional stance to itself, if doing that lets you predict and understand its behavior better than not supposing it's not one of those things, then that's good enough to say we're kind of detecting auto-intentional agents. Um, I think with humans, for example, 
that is the case. I think for AI systems that currently exist, it's not the case. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's a great question. I think there's probably a lot more to think and say about that, but uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see if I have, I have one minute to try to speed run Jonas's question here. Um, My my sense is that uh, that'll probably take too long just reading okay. on the question. Um, okay, but as a reminder, there is a breakout room happening in about an hour and a half that we can all join and you can talk to Giles uh, in a free form way. Okay. Um, but thank you very much, Giles, and everyone who joined. Uh, you can give a little clap at home if you'd like. Thank you, uh, thank you for the questions.